Gliding involves flying unpowered aircraft. Though some models are fitted with a small engine and propeller, so they have the power to launch into the air on their own. No matter what the model, the sport of gliding is all about the joy of using the forces of the atmosphere to fly higher, faster, and longer. Gliders, like this model version, have three main parts, wings, fuselage, and tail. Workers build each part of the glider in two pieces, using resin and steel molds. They begin with the fuselage mold. They lay down strips of Kevlar, a strong heat-resistant material. Then they apply epoxy resin to the Kevlar fiber to reinforce it. They leave the epoxy to dry, and the next day apply strips of carbon fiber to reinforce the fuselage. The direction in which workers lay down the fiber layers is key. In flight, gliders are subject to strong forces that can bend and twist the structure. They must be sturdy, yet as light as possible. The glider's tail boom gets the same treatment, except where the antenna will go, as radio signals don't penetrate the carbon fiber very well. Workers apply a thin coat of white gel paint to the 9-meter wing mold. Gliders are always white, so they don't absorb the sun's rays and overheat. They roll a sheet of carbon fiber over the painted mold. Then the entire assembly team skillfully applies an even coat of resin. They've got to be quick. The resin cures in just 30 minutes. They add a final layer of carbon fiber to strengthen a portion of the wing that's subject to strong wind currents. After laying a white fleece over the layers of carbon fiber, they seal it between two sheets of plastic. A vacuum compresses the layers, which draws excess resin to the surface where workers can remove it. The two wing parts are glued together using the same epoxy resin that bonds and seals the carbon fibers. Mixing in some cotton flakes helps thicken the resin, which they apply to the main spar, the wing's backbone, then to the front, back, and center portions. Using a crane, workers carefully fit the two wing molds together. The mold's weight forces out any excess glue. They tightly clamp the two molds together and leave them to harden overnight in an oven heated to 60 degrees Celsius. The next day, there's a loud pop when workers separate the two molds. They carry the completed wing structure, which weighs only 60 kilograms, over to another area to trim the resin overflow and sand down the seams. Using a diamond-tipped cutter, they cut the wing in two for transport, revealing its inner structure. Then they make sure they can easily put it back together before going on to the paint shop, where they reassemble it. Workers scan the surface and mark the areas they will sand by hand. They mount the glider's fuselage on a rotating stand so they can easily access the entire surface. They sand it and then polish it to a mirror finish. As workers assemble the glider, they inspect every system. They check the engine command that lowers the glider's launch propeller and retracts it into the fuselage. The landing gear must lower and retract smoothly out of the glider's undercarriage. Now they reassemble the wings. They check the air brake located in the wing. And finally, they install the canopy. The glider is complete. 
sturdy yet light, this midsize model can reach speeds of nearly 300 kilometers per hour thanks to its sleek design.